Thanks to AV Tools for sponsoring this video. More on them later. Hey guys, in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how you can create this advanced glitch effect in After Effects. As you can see, it's quite detailed, it's really easy to make, and it's completely procedural. So with that said, let's begin. Before we jump into the tutorial, let me give you guys an overview of this project. We're basically gonna create one distorted comp, and after that, we're gonna duplicate it a bunch of time. In every duplicated comp, we're gonna add some effects. And finally, we're gonna stack them up one over another, like a sandwich or a burger or whatever layer food you can think of. So with that said, let's go to After Effects. So in After Effects, the first thing I did was change the color depth from 8 to 16 by holding Alt and clicking over it. This basically extends our color reach to a more broader selection and makes the hues more punchier because we are working with a lot more color details. There's a whole lot of things about color bits and channels. The basic gist is the more bit depth, the more high range color values you'll be working with. This also makes the project much more heavier, so keep that in mind. So, I created a basic 1080p comp with 24 FPS and named it Placeholder. This is the comp where we're gonna be putting our texts or logos to get affected by this glitch. For this example, I just used a simple text layer. After this, I created another new comp, same dimensions, and named it Map. I created a white solid and renamed it Fractal. I added a linear wipe by going Effect, Transition, linear wipe. I animated it from going left to right. I also changed the speed graph so it starts fast then goes slow towards the end. I added a turbulent displace to this layer by going effect, distort, turbulent displace. I modified the amount and the size to get that uneven look. After this I dropped in a mosaic effect by going effect, stylize, mosaic. And as the name suggests, it mosaic, I think, the edges. Here is a closer look of all the effects and their settings. Now it was time to add some fractal noise by going effect, noise and grain, fractal noise. In the fractal noise effect, I changed the fractal type to max and the noise to block to get that blocky look. Then I started playing with the contrast and the brightness of the fractals. After this, I opened up the transform settings and unlocked uniform scaling and basically played with the fractal's X and Y scale. I animated the fractal's evolution with a simple time expression. These are the fractal settings I changed. After this, I duplicated this layer and renamed it fractal R. I deleted the fractal noise effect on this layer and then offset it. And this is our map ready. We're gonna be using this to reveal our placeholder comp, so let's do that. I created a new comp and named it Basic Reveal. I dragged both the placeholder and the map comp inside this comp. Then I used the placeholder comp to track mat the map comp, then changed the mat from alpha to luminance. By doing this now, the placeholder comp is getting revealed by the brightness of the map comp which adds much more details with even different opacity values. After this, I added an adjustment layer, then threw in a displacement effect by going Effect, Distort, Displacement Map. I changed the displacement map layer to the Map Comp, then I changed both the Max and the Horizontal Displacement to Luminance. Now if I play with the displacement values, you can see it's displacing the text. But the text's original position is also getting changed. There's an easy fix to it. I added a transform effect to the adjustment layer by going Effect, Distort, Transform. In the transform effect, I alt click the position property to write an expression which is value plus start square bracket and end square bracket. Then I pick up the horizontal displacement 
added a comma, then pick with the vertical displacement. After this, I put the transform effect before the displacement. Now, if I change the displacement value, you can see the layer's position is not getting affected. I wish I can take credit for this, but it's an old trick from a video copilot's tutorial by Andrew Kramer. After playing with different displacement values, this is what I finally settled on. So as you can see, the text is revealing itself in a very unique way. And now we're gonna build up on this. The hard part is done. Now we will just copy this comp over and over to make different variations. Before going more deep, I want to thank today's sponsor, AVE Tools. AVE Tools gonna help you take your videos to the next level. From creative transitions to beautiful looking overlays, AVE Tools got your back. Choose from a plethora of light leaks to LUTs. From prism overlays to those cool looking broken glass effects, the possibilities are limitless. You can add all this with just one single click. Just choose your overlay or transition and click on this button to add it to your composition. It's that much easy. Whether you are a motion graphics artist or an editor, create eye-catching videos with just few clicks. With their extensive library of products and easy-to-use tools, level up your next video with ease. More good news for my subscribers. You guys can get 30% off on all the products with the promo code MOTIONNERDS30. So check them out from the link in the description. Thank you to AVE Tools again for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the tutorial. I duplicated the basic reveal comp and renamed it color reveal. After this, I went to effect, color correction, colorama. Colorama is basically an advanced tint effect which basically recolors the pixels based on a layer's different color or intensity values. Here I chose the input value to be alpha and the rest of the settings were mostly unchanged. I did change the color just a tiny bit though. After this, I duplicated this comp and renamed it Lines Reveal. I deleted the Colorama effect, then went to Effect, Stylize, Find Edges. This effect actually calculates a layer alpha and luma values and add borders around them. I added an invert effect by going Effect, Channels, Invert. This will change the edge colors to white. Now we need to get rid of this solid black and the easiest way is to key it out. I went to Effect, Keying, Linear Color Key, then key out the black part. You do need to play with the tolerance and the softness values to get it where you can use it. If the edges become too jagged, you can also apply a small amount of blur to it. For this case, it didn't need any blur. So this is our line reveal. This next one is going to be revealing the numbers and it's the easiest one. I duplicated the line reveal comp and renamed it number reveal. I deleted the last three effects on this adjustment layer. After this, I added some random text number, which can be anything. I centered it out, opened up the text property and added a random expression to it. This will generate these random numbers. After this, I went to Effect, Stylize, CC Repetile. I extended this layer to fill up the comp. I changed this layer's blending mode to Stencil Alpha, so it's only visible when there is something beneath it. Like the rest of them, I changed the displacement values a little bit, and this is our number reveal comp. Time to add some dots. I duplicated the color reveal comp again and renamed it to dot reveal. I went to effect, simulation, CC ball action. I basically played with the ball size and the grid spacing till I was happy with it. Once done, again I changed the displacement value a bit to get a new look on it. At some point I thought maybe a white colored dots will look good. But in the end, I end up keeping the original Colorama colors. And this is our dot reveal comp. I created a new final comp and dragged all the comps we made inside it. Then I animated the opacity of all the comps other than the basic reveal comp from 100 to 0. I did this because we heavily modified the edges of our comps with those effects. 
and once the glitch is done revealing the final text or logo, I don't want those duplicates to poke around the edges. After this I started offsetting the layers in the timeline. At this point I added a layer style to the basic reveal comp since it was just colored white. This part isn't really that important, you'll probably recolor your artwork in the placeholder comp to begin with. After this I added an adjustment layer, then went to effect, plug in everything, quick chromatic abbreviation 3. Now this is a free plugin to add chromatic abbreviation. You can do it manually, but it will take more time and layers. This plugin do that for a fraction of time. It renders fast and it's free, so no point of not using it. I recommend it highly and there's a link in the description for downloading it. I just played with its position value to add just a bit of chromatic abbreviation, nothing too crazy. I also faded this layer's opacity too in the ending. I created another adjustment layer and added a glow effect where I played with its threshold, radius and intensity to add a concentrated glow. After this I duplicated it and spread it a bit so it acts more like a bloom. For the final touches I added the posterized time effect to different comps with different frame rates. This will make some comps go faster and some are slower to add to that whole glitching aesthetic. And that's it. This is our final animation done. As I said, it's completely procedural effect so you can easily change between text or logos or some other graphics. Experiment with different shapes and displacement methods to make something really cool and unique. I experimented with some deep glow and I must say, Deep Glow is so much better than the standard After Effects Glow. If you can afford it, please get it. You won't be regretting it. Don't forget, you can collect this project file from my Gumroad page. Link is in the description. I want to thank AV Tools again for the sponsorship. Don't forget, you guys can get up to 30% off with that promo code. So make sure you get it. As always, thank you all for watching. If you like this tutorial, please give it a like and share your thoughts down in the comment section. Subscribe to Motion Nerds for more motion graphics goodness. Take care of yourself and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye guys.